I was discussing with a friend of mine earlier today, he happens to be a GP here in London, about the degeneracy uh, we see around us, particularly as it's promoted in the media now, with such, uh, with such force, it's everywhere. And um, I was just reminded of a, a passage in a book I got recently about the Antichrist. Now, this is no colourful myth. Um, this book uh, is called Man and the Universe, an Islamic Perspective by Mustafa al-Badawi. Now, uh, the author of this book is a consultant psychiatrist and a member of the Royal College of Psychiatrists. So he's a distinguished psychiatrist in his own right. Uh, the book is recommended by other psychiatrists on the back. And uh, he has some interesting things to say about um the Antichrist and the imposter, as he also calls him, in the context of Western civilization or the inverted civilization, as he calls it, life here in the West. Just wanted to share with you uh, his thoughts, which I think are, are really uh, quite insightful. So uh, this is on page 87 of the book onwards. Judaism and Christianity both agree with Islam in affirming a downward trend for humanity which is to continue until the cataclysms heralding doomsday. Sometime during the late stages of this process, the Antichrist shall appear, who is not only the epitome of all evil, but also an inverted image of Jesus, may peace be upon him, whom we will claim to personify. The prophet, may God's blessings and peace be upon him, called him the imposter al-Dajjal, since his characteristic attitude will be relabeling good as evil and evil as good, heaven as hell and hell as heaven, himself as the Christ and Christ as the Antichrist. And this is precisely what the West has already succeeded in doing, he says. They have redefined the human being by bringing his physical form to the fore and denying his spirit, redefining him thus as an animal. And they have set the stage for putting everything to the service of the body and thinking solely in material terms. Whereas all religions say that man is degenerating, the West claims that, on the contrary, he is improving by the day, with the implication that they are now far more advanced, far more clever and mature than anyone in the past. This evidently gives them the right to dismiss lightly the prophets and sages of old and their timeless wisdom and speak of them in condescending and derogatory terms. Religion has been redefined as superstition and the life to come as a childish belief deriving from an inability to face reality. Miraculous events are no more than trickery, hypnosis or self-deluding fantasies. Alcohol, gambling and usury are socially condoned practices. Chastity has now become a charge that most youngsters are anxious to avoid. Homosexuality has already been legalised. It is legal to have intercourse with any number of males, females or even animals. But it is illegal to have two officially recognised wives, each enjoying, together with her children, full legal rights. More than half the men and women in the West have extramarital affairs, a good proportion having multiple affairs. The range of what is defined as normal is rapidly being extended to include, to exclude, nothing. The death penalty has been almost totally abolished. This means that the person who kills another is certain to survive and have a sporting chance of being let off for good behaviour after an acceptable number of years in a fairly comfortable prison. Thus, the murderer is guaranteed the right to live that same right he has deprived his victim of. The following passage, admitting to the willful madness of such a system, was taken from a review of a book written by Jay Gilligan, an American forensic psychiatrist. He writes, The USA, which is massively more violent than any other democracy and every other economically developed nation, its prison population is over 2 million, nearly 1% of the entire population, 
and just happens to be by far the singular dominant nation of the world in economic and material terms. We have the level of criminal violence we do because we have arranged our social and economic life as we have. The, brutal, the brutality and violence of American life are a signal that there are profound social costs to maintain these arrangements. We have decided that we prefer this to a far less violent alternative. Then there, are, there is the clamour for human rights, which all hinges on who is defined as human and consequently as having rights. The Americans manifestly denied the Native Americans human status and thus were able to exterminate systematically whole nations of them. The Spanish did the same in Latin America. Hitler also refused human status to the mentally ill, the subnormal, even before turning his demonic attention to the Poles, then to many other ethnic groups, including the Jews and the Gypsies. He was thus able to massacre them not only without internal opposition, but by recruiting some of the elite of German society. However, let us not forget that the euthanasia program came into being long before the Nazis came to power. For example, in 1922, Gerhard Hoffmann laid before the Reichstag a plan for the mass extermination of the mentally ill, the terminally ill, the exhausted, the crippled and incurably ill children. A decade later, this was adopted as official policy and, with the help of numerous physicians and nurses, 200,000 persons were murdered between 1939 and 1945. And let us not forget that Hitler, Stalin, Milosevic and their likes are nothing if not products of Western civilization. The Huns and Mongols were brutal indeed as they established their military supremacy over conquered territories, yet their worst accesses amounted to little when compared objectively to the mass atrocities committed by this civilization, for they at least were never genocidal. This is not to deny that there are millions of humane and compassionate people in the West, but the very fact that they accept such people as Hitler and Milosevic for leaders must indicate something. The behind-the-scenes machinations of their now dominant world system in bringing third world Hitlers and Milosevic's to power is also proverbial. It is not sufficient for humane people in the West simply to disassociate themselves from all this mentality. The best elements in Western society are kept away from power, yet the duplicity of those actually wielding it is no longer capable of being effectively camouflaged. One must be blinded with prejudice not to see that, as nations rather than as individuals, the West very often says one thing and does the opposite. Grand proclamations of human rights are made and used as smoke screens behind which are carried out their real intentions, whether these be to prop up a repressive totalitarian regime or to bring down another that is anti-Western, to justify massive military intervention in Kuwait or total inertia in Rwanda, and so on. What more evidence is needed to show that the West is actually an inverted civilization? We have mentioned previously how Freud closed all the upper gates by denying that there was a spirit and dismissing religion as something springing from the unconscious while opening all the lower gates by trying to bring to the surface the lowest tendencies in human beings. This was a very effective way indeed of shutting man from heavenly influences and leaving him defenceless before demonic ones. We also made mention of Jung's definition of the archetypes as something belonging to a hypothetical collective unconscious, that is, archetypes as situated below, whereas the true archetypes belong to the highest spiritual level. 
The devil and his influences are denied as myth, while at the same time his handiwork is everywhere manifest, and even openly promoted and familiarised through such mediums as popular demonic films, music and even cartoons. God is likewise relegated to myth, while the reflection of his attributes, such as truth, justice and mercy in human society, is everywhere touted but are manifestly missing. It remains to say that from the Islamic point of view, Western civilization is the inevitable last stage in human degeneracy. The downward trend has been progressing for thousands of years but its acceleration has now become insane. To reach rock bottom in this process, there had to emerge a civilization totally cut off from all spirituality and all higher principles, leading to chaos at all levels, together with the inability to recognize such chaos for what it really is. Such a civilization must offer the appearance of unparalleled excellence in everything material and to have gone such a long way in the process of redefinition and inversion as to deprive its people of all power of discernment. This sets the stage for the crowning event in this process, the appearance of the imposter. This is the Antichrist. He is described in Hadith as able to move across the face of the earth as swiftly as rain clouds carried by the wind and to ride on, the mount, on a mount so great that the distance between its ears is 40 cubits. Furthermore, his voice will carry so far that it will be heard by the people of the east and those of the west. These descriptions are nowadays easily translatable into currently existing technological devices. We can assert with confidence that the West is now ready for the imposter. People are mentally imprisoned in the tangible world and this is precisely the dimension that the imposter will be able to master and he shall show them such wonders in that they will rapidly accept whatever claims he shall wish to make. It may appear from our previous depiction of the degeneration of Muslim societies and our depiction in this chapter of the West that they stand equal in this respect. This is not so. The kind of inversion that we have just described is something that has already been consummated and normalised in the West. Whereas among Muslims, although the trend is similar, it is much less widespread and is still recognised as abnormal. And there's the end of that extraordinary chapter. And I do actually recommend uh, this book by a leading consultant psychiatrist. Um, until next time.